Mind Your Farm Business on realagriculture.com is brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. Welcome to the Mind Your Farm Business podcast brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. I'm Sean Haney, founder of realagriculture.com and host of Real Ag Radio, which you can hear every day at 4.30 Eastern on Rural Radio 147 on Sirius XM. You can find more episodes of this podcast by going to mindyourfarmbusiness.com or downloading the podcast on iTunes. You know, agriculture right now is going through some tight times. Thin margins out there in farmland. Gone are the days of lofty profits, brand new equipment every year, and the free wheel spending times of the golden age of agriculture. It's difficult. In tight times, we really get to see who is managing their farm business and who's kind of just along for the ride and making agriculture more of a lifestyle than a business. Dealing with all the variables being thrown at you, things that are completely out of your control on a daily basis is real tough. But with commitment and discipline, you can get through it. You can live to fight another day, so to speak. Today's guest is Dr. David Cole. He's been a guest several times on this podcast. He's traveled the world speaking to farm audiences about farm management. I know you're going to enjoy this episode entitled Farming Through Adversity, Managing Around What You Can't Control. Enjoy my conversation with Dr. David Cole. Dr. Cole, how are you doing today? Oh, doing very well down here in Virginia. Uh, it's about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, so uh, uh, the summer is with us. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Dr. Cole, 2019 so far, has it, it's really been about adversity. There's a lot of things that have been hitting growers, you know, weather and markets, trade disruption. There's so many things that are impacting growers' profitability, but those and what's crazy is that those things are so much out of the grower's control. You know, in these tight and volatile times, how do you defend yourself? How do you defend your farm business against these external factors? It's really interesting. I get this question uh, quite often. And, you know, I just have a philosophy. Manage the things that you can manage and manage around the uncontrollables. And it's about like an athlete, whether it's a hockey player, basketball player, or whatever. What you got to do is maintain focus. And, uh, you know, in maintaining focus, I recommend to agricultural producers develop a good business plan. Uh, And the business plan has to have what I call sensitivity analysis, sensitivity analysis to weather or prices or cost, et cetera, et cetera. And what that does, it gives you kind of the, the boundaries of the road, the parameters out there. I think another a uh, real critical element uh, is to have that set of strong financials, but focus on the top half of the balance sheet, that being working capital. Because one of the things that I find is many farm operations and ranch operations are heavy in equity and land equity, but having that top half of that balance sheet with a strong working capital position, and oftentimes I like to look at net working capital at least 15, 20 percent of expenses, it gives you that flexibility. In other words, uh, you don't have to market when everybody else is marketing. You're able to take cash discounts, et cetera, et cetera. And so working with that lender, developing and maintaining that strong working capital is a very, very important element. And then I think the other element is to have a good working relationship, whether it's with a lender, a team of advisors, et cetera, et cetera, or other pure producers uh, that have a positive attitude. So you can kind of bounce some of the ideas off because oftentimes if you just uh, read the tweets and the headlines out here, you can get very, very depressed. And uh, I had it put very, very simply, and you can relate to Wayne Gretzky. They said you know, they often ask Gretzky, uh, you know, what made him successful. He anticipates where the puck's going to be whether, where, uh, rather than where the puck's at. And I'm a basketball player, and I spent quite a little bit of time with some of the collegiate basketball teams last winter just to get away from agriculture just a little bit and go back to my roots. And it's very, very analogous to one of the coaches saying in shooting foul shots, he says, basically, you uh, shoot, uh, aim for over the rim and follow your fundamentals, and you're going to make 75 to 80 percent of the shots. And that's what I tell people out here. You focus on your fundamentals, 
And one of the things is, uh, and you, you know, you kind of aim for over the rim and, you know, be, you'll be successful 75 to 80 percent of the time. You're not going to be successful all the time. But those are some of the critical pieces of advice uh, that I have. And, and matter of fact, in our business, we have the dairy and dairy creamer business. That's one of the things that we're attempting to do with all these headlines coming at us. You know, as you're describing those fundamentals, I'm picturing like building a fortress and you're, you have a moat around that fortress. It's, it's, you're defending yourself. You're defending your farm business against these external factors that are completely out of your control. But you're, you're defending the business against those factors by building that foundational fortress. That is and, – and what helps you build that uh, uh, fortress is uh, doing that you know, game plan on the piece of paper and then – Having that necessary working capital, you know, in case you get invaded over here, uh, you can utilize uh, some of that working capital. But if you get an opportunity, uh, one of the things is it allows you to kind of build uh, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the working capital. But one of the things that I'm trying to tell producers, we're in an environment of base hits rather than home runs. You know, a few years ago, when we would do these podcasts, we were in the home run era, you know, prices were extremely high and, you know, margins were high. Now we're into high volatility and low margin. So one of the things you have to do is manage your expectations out there. And then when those little windows of opportunity come along, uh, you take those opportunities. And that's how uh, you can kind of build that, you know, fortress uh, around your operation, regardless of the economic or uh, the weather conditions. Now, there's always going to be those unusual events that will challenge us, and every business gets hit with them. But again, focusing on those fundamentals, very, very cr- critical. Now, you mentioned going back 10 years to like that golden age. We had high prices, high demand. Quite frankly, you you couldn't do you could do no wrong, right? D- did we? Do you, do you think that we misstepped? That we didn't like use those really good times to to build up that fortress to protect ourselves when times got super thin like they are today? The thing is, I don't like to slam people, kick them while they're down, you know, but one of the things that I have a philosophy, good times always get us into trouble uh, because we, first of all, we think the good times are going to last forever, which they don't. And everybody said, well, it's different this time. Whenever you hear that, yeah, you better run for uh, cover. And so, you got to remember those golden years, they come about once every 40 years. Uh, you know, you go back and a- analyze to World War I, 1910 era. Uh, if we've had about three of those other type of cycles, so they're very, very unusual. And what was unusual about this cycle, it lasted so long, it got people to say, you know, it's a little bit different this time. And so what happened was uh, the business, they grew the business a little bit too fast, and sometimes the business – uh, outgrew their management uh, expectations or management capabilities. And so what happened was uh, we got into that era. Instead of building some of that working capital, building that reserve, uh, you know, we've got into problems. And now uh, we're paying the price. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that pendulum swings on, you know, the mood of the entrepreneur, uh, not just in agriculture, but in, in any business. You know, right now, when we have these tight times profitability wise on both sides of the border, people can focus on costs, but you you can mm-hmm. swing too far on that pendulum and you can really hurt yourself foolishly. And, and that's something that's in your control you need to be conscious of the the health of the business when you're you can't just get into straight cost cutting mode and hurt yourself in the long run. You're very spot on on that one there. And uh, what I find is I'll, I'll just give you a couple examples. Uh, in the beef industry, we had uh, in the dairy industry, we had people give up their vaccinations, uh, you know, to cut costs, et cetera, et cetera. And what happened was. Uh, a year later, black leg broke out and they lost, you know, part of the herd, et cetera, et cetera. Others, uh, what they did, they cut the co- uh, crop insurance only to get hailed out. Now, uh, what you got to do is you got to look at cutting costs, but you got to cut the right cost. And, and then you got to balance it off with the risk uh, that that could eventually bring in. So just cut costs for cutting costs sake, uh, 
is not necessarily a good strategy. And what you got to do is do kind of a cost benefit analysis of which cost to uh, actually cut out there. And right now, a lot of the farm publications down here, I'm not saying up in Canada, you know, they're really hitting on that uh, cost. Yeah, you got to uh, focus on that, but you got to cut the right cost. So when you do that cost benefit analysis, just let's let's kind of stay here for a minute. What does that kind of look like? It's like sort of if I cut this cost, here's what I'm gaining, but here's what I'm potentially losing or what I'm risking. What does that look like? Exactly. You do what we call line-by-line analysis. And if you cut this cost, uh, uh, well, uh, here's the potential benefits, monetary benefits, but also here is that potential risk. And the problem is uh, oftentimes the producer will get very emotional and – uh, and so sometimes you have to bring that objectivity. And so sometimes an outside view on those numbers uh, can really bring some of that objectivity out there. And that's one of the things we even use in our business uh, is kind of that outside team of advisors just to say, are we cutting the right costs or what's the uh, unintended consequence? That's a key word. What are the unintended consequences of cutting this cost? short run and long run. And others are actually using enterprise analysis, you know, breaking. We've got many of our operations now are multi-sources of income and, and revenue out here. So sometimes you break it down by enterprise. Enterprise analysis is probably one of the hotter things going on um, south of the border uh, uh, right now as as people have diversified out there and putting their energies where they can get the biggest bang for the buck. Yeah, that's so, so, so important, especially if you're like a mixed farm where it's like, say you have a feed yard, but you're also a cash mm-hmm. cropper. You you got to break it up and, and make sure you understand where are the spots you can improve in each of those businesses. It's not about getting shedding one or getting rid of the other. It's it's about how do I manage those two entities or three entities even better. That's exactly right. And what you got to be careful of there is sometimes people get uh, so bogged down into the minutia, they wanted to get get it right down to the cent uh, that they just throw their hands up and say, ah, oh, I can't do this. I often will hear that. And what I tell them is it's analogous to a baseball stadium. What you try to do, you get try to get between first and third, and then eventually as you work on this over the years, then you'll narrow yourself down to uh, home play. Don't try to be a perfectionist uh, on those costs. <laughs> We're going to get back to my discussion with Dr. Cole in this episode of Mind Your Farm Business, but first, a word from our sponsor. This episode of the Mind Your Farm Business podcast is brought to you by RBC. Today's producers are thinking hard about where they want to go and what moves to make to get them there. A business plan is your roadmap to success. Without one, it's easy to get lost along the way. You can count on the services and expertise RBC offers to help you meet your business goals and chart a course to success. Visit rbc.com slash chart your course to find an agriculture account manager near you. Are tight times like this a good opportunity as you're as you're evaluating your business? Maybe you're doing some of the enterprise analysis to, to sort of review maybe who you're doing business with. And I, I use, say, the grain elevator as an example. Well, you know, we've always sold our grain to the to the elevator down the road here. Is, is it a good time to kind of review those kind of relationships and see how not just cutting costs, but also maybe there's an opportunity to maximize revenue? Or maybe you've been sort of uh, ignoring other opportunities that are potentially out there? You know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because you uh, asked me a pre-question about that. I think the good old famous SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, is very applicable today. In other words, the strengths and weaknesses is looking internally. Opportunities and threats, of course, are looking externally. And one of the things that I think is a great time to do that SWOT analysis. In other words, here are some of our strengths. Here's our weaknesses or areas for improvement. But here's some opportunities. Do we continue to market this way? Uh, uh, should we change our marketing plan? What are some of the potential threats? And so uh, oftentimes uh, I recommend to producers, hey, do the SWOT analysis, but then bring someone else you know, from the outside in and have them kind of look at uh, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats and see if they see it the same way that you see it. Or if you have multiple business partners, have each one of them do uh, the SWOT analysis and then kind of compare results. To answer your question, it's a great time. In the, in the good times, things are so good, 
you just kind of motor on. Actually, businesses become better in tight times like this because it makes you look internally, but also look externally. You know, I was going to ask, my next question was going to be about, you know, what separates the the poor farm manager from the great farm yeah. manager in these times? And I, I think you've already answered that question. It's somebody that in the good times doesn't get out over their skis and takes too much risk on. Mm-hmm. And it's the person that when uh-huh. times are thin, probably uh, don't get too negative and, and you know, make some co- poor cost cutting decisions. It's that, it's that even keel person that's able to see operations in the short term, but also do some long-term planning all the while, no matter what the environment is. Is that correct? Yeah. It- yeah, that is correct, and it's kind of the balance between the emotional and the objectivities. It's called the head and the heart. The heart's the passion, uh, the emotional part, the head's the numbers, and you got to have balance in both of those. And when you asked me that question, I really did some interest perspective because I work both sides of the border and work with a lot of producers. I find about four things uh, that differentiates uh, the folks that – are kind of on the good or have that business, I call it business IQ, versus uh, the ones uh, that, you know, are kind of improvement. And I got to tell you a little story that happened last winter in a snowstorm in Nebraska. I had an older uh, producer uh, speaking to a youth group there while we were having lunch, and he says, you know, the 1980s, it weeded out the average and below average uh, uh, production managers. He says this business cycle is weeding out uh, the uh, average and below average business managers. And uh, the big theme here uh, that we're really talking about is this thing called business IQ. And here are three or four components of business IQ. One, you take ownership of your numbers, whether it's production numbers, marketing numbers, financial numbers, or what I call efficiency numbers. Uh, Having ownership of those numbers, you cannot look at those numbers once a year. Uh, I'm finding more and more businesses doing it at least quarterly, if not monthly, because what you gotta do is you gotta kind of make tweaks as you go throughout the year. Second thing that we are really observing uh, between the good and the poor manager, they have a marketing and risk management plan and that's whether it's commodity marketing or value added. Uh, one of the things is some of them will hire an advisory service. Uh, others will do it themselves, uh, or others will have the combination advisory service and do them themselves. And boy, you know where I'm really seeing that pick up with my younger generation of uh, uh, producers. The other thing that they really focus in on is what I call asset efficiency and margin management, or what we call earns and turns. And what they're doing is going through the business, scrutinizing every capital asset, and they're getting rid of lazy assets. And sometimes that means giving up some of the uh, rented ground. Uh, Sometimes that means, you know, uh, uh, selling a few acres off, building that liquidity uh, on that balance sheet. And one of the things is they're looking at margin management uh, and going through line by line by line and looking at uh, adjustments. And, you know, on capital assets, we call it the bird poop principle. And what's the bird poop poop principle? You go through and look at all your assets and and, uh, machinery, particularly if it's got a lot of bird poop on, it's probably not being used. (laughs) uh, So I had had to throw that one in here on the podcast, okay? Uh, and that take that one up north, uh, but uh, uh, again, what you're trying to do is optimize earns and turns. Uh, turns is asset turnover. Earns is your margin management. But boy, one particularly where we have a lot of family farms, both uh, uh, in Canada here in the United States, is every uh, family member being fully productive in that business. And boy, sometimes you have to make the hard decision and let a family member go. And we're starting to see more and more of that. And then the final thing is monitor, monitor, monitor. And again, I know at our creamery and our dairy farms, uh, the monthly variance analysis is probably the most powerful tool we use in our business plan, where we all sit down every month and we look at benchmarking ourselves to three or four years ago, but also benchmarking ourselves to peers. Well, you heard it here, everybody. The poop principle. I, I've heard you talk about before about seagull managers, about how you know people that fly in, uh, poop on everybody, then fly out. But now, now we got a new one in, re- in regarding asset management. I like it. 
<laughs> uh, let's put it this way. I always like to come up with something special. Uh, the Canadians will get a chuckle out of that one. <laughs> uh, I love it. Dr. Cole, this has been some. This has been a great discussion, some great oh, insight great. here. I really appreciate it, and I, I hope we can talk again soon on the Mind Your Farm Business podcast. Uh, uh. Hey, let's put it this way. You do great work, and it's awesome, enjoyable uh, working with you. And all, to all of our folks in Canada, uh, uh, we really uh, I have so much respect for your country. And, uh, hey, the Raptors won the NBA championship this year. <laughs> and uh, uh, congratulations on that one there. And uh, But, hey, wish you well. And one of the things is staying positive in kind of these down times. Surround yourself with uh, – a good network of people because what we find is your self-worth in life and your net worth in life is equated to people you associate with. Uh, Great advice. Thanks a lot, Dr. Cole. Yeah, thank you. Take care. As always, Dr. Cole provides fantastic perspective on managing your farm business. I love the idea of the bird poop principle to tighten up your balance sheet. Like how much does, like it makes so much sense. Right? You got some, how many of you have something parked out in your backyard? And you're like, yeah, one day we're going to use that. No, you probably won't. And if you do need it 15 years from now, chances are you can rent or borrow it or maybe even buy it at that point in time from a neighbor. But for those 15 years, it just parked in your backyard or grass growing around it. And you're having to go out there and knock the weeds down. That's not adding value to your farm business. Some great, just some practical stuff there from from Dr. Cole. Some great messaging as well on working capital to give yourself the flexibility of steering through these tight times of adversity. Hey, if you have any feedback at all on this episode or any episode you hear of Mind Your Farm Business, send me an email, shaney at realagriculture.com. You can also find more episodes of Mind Your Farm Business at mindyourfarmbusiness.com. I also want to thank RBC World Bank for being a sponsor of this podcast. And until next time, keep on minding your farm business.